Hi, this is Heidi Manhart, Technology Support Teacher with the Waterloo Regional District School Board, and it's June 2016. This tutorial will demonstrate one way to use Doc Appender to collect student-specific data over time and to be shared with their student and or their parents. The data collected could help to inform learning directions, interests, and passions. To get started, we need to understand that Doc Appender requires there to be existing documents to append the form data. If you have not already done so, you might want to check out Autocrat for Student Observations Part 1, where we create the required student documents. It's also available at https slash slash 8k6kx8. So what we're looking at, the workflow that we're looking at creating is where we have a form which feeds a spreadsheet. That happens naturally and organically. However, with Doc Appender, this data will also append to a student-specific document. In part one, with Autocrat, we created these student-specific documents. Now what we're going to be looking at is part two, where we create our observational form, we run Doc Appender, and Doc Appender will append the data to specific student documents, as well as to the response sheet. So to get started, we go to our drive and we're going to be creating a form. And the example that I'm going to use today is learning skills. Right. The first question in our form is going to be student name. We are actually going to leave this one um, blank and I usually choose drop down just because I generally access these kinds of forms on a smaller um, interface like a smartphone or an iPad um, and so drop down just helps the, uh, the screen space uh, be better optimized. So we're going to add a second question. This is going to be the learning skill category. And this is then where you will type in the different learning skills. So here in Ontario, um, the learning skills that we have to report on are responsibility, uh, collaboration, self-regulation, initiative, and independence. How you um, structure this question, whether it's multiple choice or drop down, again, is up to you. I, again, prefer drop down, so I'm going to change that uh, to drop down. I'm going to make it required. And the reason why I make these required is because I do not want to do a, a submission with blank answers. This one is where I'm going to assess what the learning skill level is. And I'm going to leave that one at multiple choice. Two more questions. This will be my uh, comment box. Change that to a paragraph. And again, make it required. And I think I forgot to make this one required, so I'll just go back. And last question um, we're going to add is a picture evidence box. Short answer. I'm just going to move these around. There we go. So we should have five questions altogether. We have our name, our learning skill categories, our learning skill levels, a comment box, and a picture evidence box. This picture evidence box will not be used at this point in time. However, it would be here in case you would like to take pictures um, with a Drive app, for instance, on an iPad. You upload that picture to your Drive, you copy the link, and paste it into your form submission. Um, when you do that, the benefit of it is you can have something like this where you have your um, sheet available. If you click on that sheet and we look at it, you can see that there are links here and that these links um, will actually be links to photos. Um, so if we click on it, it'll open um, a photo that is relevant to the comment being made. Uh, so this one could have been around a student's um, work about tigers and uh, what they had what they had reported on. So the way that you get that link is by having an evidence field where you can paste the URL into.
So going back up to the top of our form, there are form settings that we need to take a look at. Now I'm in a GAF environment and so our settings automatically default to requiring a login. Um, because this is for your purposes, if you are the only educator using the form, I would say leave it at anyone, um, then you don't have to sign in to use it. If there are multiple educators, then you may want to force sign in so that it can collect um, username and that you know who is actually responding. You can change your confirmation page, obviously. Um, I might put you know something motivational for myself. I'm going to leave that I can submit another response. I'm going to add that I can edit my response um, because I do want to be able to correct a response that is um, being submitted. Now one thing to note is that the edited response will change in the spreadsheet. However, because we are using going to be using Doc Appender, it may re, it may actually append two submissions, um, the one that you just did plus the plus the revision. So you may have to go back and manually change that. And then we'll just click Save. Um, so now what we need to do is have Doc Appender. If you've used add-ons before in forms, you will have the uh, puzzle piece at the top. Um, if you have Doc Appender, you're just going to launch it. If you do not, you need to come over to the More menu and you need to go to Add-ons. And when this comes in, you're going to search for Doc Appender and it is all one word. Mine has already been um, included and so it says Manage. However, if you do not have it, it should say Plus Free. Please click the plus free button and then also the allow buttons to uh, give the script permission to interact with your drive. Once you've done that come on up to the puzzle piece and click Doc Appender, open sidebar and it will open the menus for Doc Appender. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to uh, identify the folder that it contains all of our student documents and you would have done this in part one um, so if you were going to choose pick from drive and the one that I want is called student observations JST 1617 this one has my student documents in it so I've chosen the folder and then I'm going to click next now if I click on select question, there are no questions here. You need to click on refresh list and when you click on it, it looks like nothing happens, but it actually um, does refresh your question list and it will pick up any questions in the form that are multiple choice, choose from a list, um, drop down or check boxes. So the question we want to populate is name and then I click save and populate. And what you'll notice is all of the names of my files from that folder are now populated in my name field. Okay. There is a note here that um, identifies that these options will refresh on each form submission or um, hourly. I found that this sometimes doesn't work and so if you find that you have created another uh, student document but it's not showing up in your list, just open Doc Appender and walk through the, these steps and re-enable them repopulate. So step three asks us to choose what information from our form do we want to append to the student document and um, I do want to know when the form was submitted. I don't need name because mine is drop down which means I can only choose one person and my students names are actually at the top of their documents. I do want the learning skill category levels comments and picture evidence. Now my preference in step four for showing the information is a table so I always select rows in a single horizontal table. The other two bulleted lists means that every submission is actually a bulleted list um, and the vertical tables is similar except it's in a table format. Once you've done step three to four you just click enable and Doc Appender is ready to go. So I'm just going to click X. I'm going to click on responses. Currently we have no responses but I also do not have a response sheet made yet so I'm going to click on the uh, green icon to create my spreadsheet and it should then open a spreadsheet for me. You'll notice all of the questions are my headers. Um, I like to use conditional formatting to identify um, specific criteria so I'm going to highlight level D, or excuse me column D and I'm going to scroll down to conditional formatting and I'm going to change um, my rules to text is exactly. If text is exactly N I would like my colors to be red. Click done. I'm going to add another rule this time I'm going to say if text is exactly satisfactory, I'd like it to be yellow. I'm not too worried. Whoops, wrong one here. So that block. Sorry, I need the bucket to be yellow. 
there we go. I don't color code everything, I just color code those things that I want to jump out at me. So my conditional formatting is now set up, I can close that. So essentially our form is ready to use. So if I click on the preview button, I can now go through and I can test to make sure that my form is working. So I'm going to do a quick one here and I'm going to say that Ashton and we'll click submit. So what we want to um, make sure once the form submissions have gone in is to see that they have been entered into the spreadsheet and our conditional formatting is working. And then what we want to test is that these um, learning skills are being appended to the appropriate documents. So to do that, we're going to go to our student observation folder and take a look at the documents and there we can see that there is a table for Ashton and it has been working. At this point you are also able to format the table of information coming in so you can change your column widths. Um, unfortunately you do have to do this on uh, the first time each table submission is made. Hereafter anything that I include for Ashton uh, will follow this formatting. However, um, the first time for each student I have to do it um, independently and, and uh, on its own. So what we did is we created a form we have a spreadsheet for that form uh, information to be aggregated and then we have student documents that um, are being that the information is being appended to independently and um, individually and that's how we've created this workflow now of having um, Autocrat to create the initial student documents and Doc Appender to um, append our ongoing observations which can be used for formative uh, learning and feedback.